Hey guys, Keith from Gagland, and today we're talking about brewery hoses because we've just expanded our selection online. So irrespective of whether you're a small home brewer and you've got, let's say, a brew built tank and want to upgrade your hosing to proper brewery hoses, which are pre-cut to specific lengths to go between your fermenter and bright tank or something like that, or whether you're a big brewery and you need a big fat, you know, two inch hose so you can get maximum flow rate, um, you know, off to your, you know, your canning machine or kegging machine or something like that. We have pretty much got all those options covered. And we can also do some custom uh, lengths of hose as well. We have uh, options to swage the ends on the hoses for you. But generally speaking, we have a lot of pre-cut lengths already on the website. So most of you will probably find our pre-cut lengths are probably the way to go. And it's quick for us to just pull them off the shelf and send them out to you. So with the brewery hoses, we've got a few different categories. So let me get into it now. We've got basically butyl rubber. Butyl rubber hose has the one advantage that it has uh, really no odor or smell about it. Um, and so if you pick it up, give it a whiff like that, it's really great because it uh, doesn't impart any aroma. It's a natural rubber, of course, but one of the disadvantage of butyl rubber is it doesn't have quite as good chemical resistance. So if you're after like um, better chemical resistance, you may want to look at the EPDM hoses. So the EPDM hoses, if you're the kind of person who abuses the hose or leaves acid or caustic in there for a while, look, maybe the EPDM are the way to go. So they're the blue ones you'll see on the website. So if you pick up an EPDM hose, you've got to remember it does have a bit of an aroma. So if you pick it up and give it a whiff like that, basically, um, you know, you can smell kind of that slight kind of rubbery smell, I suppose. So if you've got a brand new hose, which is EPDM, you must run it through a hot rinse cycle a couple times. So if you've got like hot caustic wash, you're washing the tanks out or something like that, I'd highly recommend running that through the hose twice. Uh, so you can blow off a lot of that sort of aroma. Once you've done that, look, they're perfectly fine. And you'll notice the aroma will eventually sort of, as the hose continues to cure, it'll just sort of blow off and disappear out of the hose anyway. So after some time, this will have just no aroma, just like the butyl rubber will. Um, but you just got to remember, you know, it's horses for courses, I guess. If you want to get a hose straight off the shelf and use it straight away, um, you know, maybe the uh, butyl rubber, the best one for you. If you want slightly higher chemical resistance, resistance you've got the EPDM here ones. Um, the other thing I should mention is silicon as well. So we've got some uh, silicon hose. This is just our braided silicon hose. This is kind of like the cheapest option. Unlike this and this option here, so the butyl rubber or for instance, the EPDM, this one doesn't have a helix inside. So if you're using, let's say a strong pump, which is uh, you know, really sucking hard on the hose, then this may not be the best option because it can actually start to collapse the hose down. Look, for you small guys and small home brewers, I do love the silicon hose because it's really flexible so you can bend it around tight radiuses while these other hoses have larger minimum radiuses. I mean, you get these larger hoses like this, they're like quite sort of stiff or even this two inch EPDM it is like starting to get pretty hard to bend. So that can be a little bit inconvenient if you're operating in a tight garage space or something and the hose needs to sort of, you know, turn on sharp bend or something like that. Obviously, the smaller hose you go, it's easier to bend. So if you get a, you know, the one and a half inch, obviously way easier um, than the uh, than the big hoses. But the main difference is with these silicon hoses, they're just braided, so they're still good for you know hot temperatures and uh, you know quite uh, high pressures. So you don't have to worry too much about you know uh, higher pressures. It's just the suction. Um, and these ones, obviously, because of that helix inside the hose, they stay quite rigid. Even if you were to accidentally, you know, drive over these hoses with a forklift, you know, they're probably going to survive the distance and handle that a lot better than something made out of silicon. So I'm going to show you a few different things on basically how the ends of the hose are terminated and reason why these swages are better, I suppose, than just using a hose clamp. And I'm also going to show you on if you wanted to have a cheap option and you wanted to use a hose clamp, how to basically terminate the hose on your own. So with these brewery hoses, you're probably wondering why do we go with these relatively expensive type of triclover fittings and swaged ends? I mean, they're complicated to put on and they're not something you can do yourself. So you have to go to somebody with a hydraulic swaging tool to basically terminate the ends on these hoses. So uh, why do we go to that extra effort? And it's quite simple. It just makes the hose a lot more sanitary to use. So they certainly look nicer. So when you don't have any you know, hose clamps dangling off here for things to get caught on, that's better. But the other problem is, um, you know, when you're using 
those hose clamp, it leaves sort of potential cavities for stuff to get stuck into. So what I mean by that is if you look in the bore of this type of hose, it's quite a smooth transition down the bore and then into the actual hose itself. So if you look into that hose there like that, I'm not sure if you guys can really see, but it transitions really nicely from the fitting into the rubber hose. So let's look at this type of swage fitting. So this is basically before it's been swaged onto the hose. You can see the diameter of that compared to the diameter of this. This actual stainless collar here has actually shrunk down. It's probably shrunk down by, you know, between five and 10 millimeters. So you can imagine the amount of force to basically squish on this bit of stainless here and squish it so much that the actual diameter reduces in size. That's a huge amount of force and you're not gonna be able to do that without the proper tools. So if you buy these from us, you can certainly make your own hoses. We do have these for sale on the website, the one and a half inch and the uh, two inch sizes, for instance. And you could go to Pertech or somewhere else or uh, maybe um, EZ Hosing or something and they can basically swage this onto the hose as long as you give them the right specification of how much you need to squash and that'll depend on the hose wall thickness. So with the hoses that we have on the website, all the blue ones come with these 304 stainless steel swage fittings on the end. If you got the Brewflex hoses, so that's the AgriBrew or the GlideTech hose, these ones we have 316 stainless, so a bit of a higher spec, spec on these. So this is sort of like a uh, pharmaceutical spec, I suppose, but for a lot of the breweries, probably they might find the 304, I mean 304 stainless use, is used widely throughout most breweries already, so you probably find these to be acceptable if you're a little bit more price sensitive. Um, but what I mean by this being more sanitary, I'll just show you in a bit more detail. If you look at a typical type of barb and uh, hose clamp type arrangement, that would be something like this. Now this is certainly a lot cheaper, you know, a lot of home brewers might resort to something like this, for instance. But if you have a look at the hosing, you see when we've got a hose clamp on here, we end up with a very small cavity in here. So because this hose, the, uh, the clamp is only clamping up here and it's not clamping across the full girth and it certainly is not clamping right up to the face of the hose here, you end up with a very small kind of cavity here. So you can see that little crevice. So if I've got, let's say, a small amount of beer or bacteria, let's say, and it's sort of in this sort of section of the hose, it's sort of tucked in there. Let's say I've got bacteria in there. You can see, I could CIP this and uh, try to wash it out all day long, but that little bit of crud there is probably never going to really wash out. I'll, I'll send like, for instance, you know, sanitizer down here and that'll just stay there. And they can get sort of lodged in there, particularly when the hose is under a bit of pressure. The hose kind of like expands outward a little bit like that. And a bit of beer, maybe you're doing a Brett Sour beer or something like that and a little bit get, get get a bit, little bit get stuck in there like that. And then you find it very, very hard to sanitize. So that could probably send you, you know, your next batch of beer uh, infected or something. So when you have a probably swage fitting like this, where the swage is on the barb and the, see how the swage is flush with the barb there. So it's squishing the hose right up to the edge. So the sealing face is right up to the edge of the hose here. And that's especially when it's done to the correct specification and swage correctly. So yeah, that's basically the difference. If you want a really high quality, um, you know, hose with good terminated ends, then look, these swage fittings are totally the way to go. If you need custom sizes, we can do them for you. Um, or you can buy these fittings and take them to a proper shop to get them swaged up. But um, yeah, that's more or less it for these, these swage fittings and how they work. Now let's say you're a little bit price sensitive and you still wanted to make your own silicon hoses up yourself, that's perfectly fine. And to be honest with you, even if you really did need to, you know, you had a little bit of crub or bacteria potentially in the hose, you can always heat sterilize it, which is sort of the, you know, kind of like the best practice if you ever do a Brett beer or something like that and you really wanna sanitize all the hoses and kill everything and you can't quite get into all those cracks and crevices, just put boiling hot liquid through there for a significant amount of time and that's gonna get you a, at least a half decent job done. So let's say you didn't have also a swaging machine or didn't wanna pay the extra for these types, a good economical option is to just buy these, um, you know, one and a half inch TC barb fittings for instance and push that into the hose. So this silicon braided hose, relatively easy to terminate yourself. Obviously if you're using stepless clamps, remember to put them on first, that's one thing I always forget. Um, it helps if a little bit if you wet the, uh, the barb on the hose here. It takes a little bit of force to push this in like that. But as you can see, you just sort of ram it directly into the hose like so. You can use like a circular kind of motion to kind of push it down into the hose like that. But before too long, you'll get to this stage here. Now, I don't really love using the worm drive hose clamps, I'll say. I use these stepless hose clamps specifically because I think they just sort of make a much neater hose join. So if you look at like the, um, the, the worm drive clamps, you do them up like this, and they've also got a bit of a flat spot where the worm drive is. So they don't really, they generally will derate the hose burst pressure because of that 
Basically, when you've got those worm drive, they don't sort of grab the hose in a perfect circle. So these stepless ones are definitely the way to go. They're a little bit more work and they're also single use, so you can't reuse them. But what I would normally do is get two of these, one of them, you know, going further up onto that barb and another one I'll put lower down. Now this lower down one is kind of to a, basically avoid that issue I was talking about before and at least try to minimize that little crevice on the edge of the hose barb as much as I can. And also using two clamps, it gives you a little bit of redundancy as well. So just in case one breaks or something like that, you've got kind of a backup there. So put those hose clamps on there and then what you wanna do is use this sort of tool like this. So this is just a standard tool. We do sell them on the website as well. And then just go to each hose clamp like this, like that, and crimp it down. So squeeze that like so. And look, if you wanna make it look a bit nicer, you can also line these two crimp parts up. So on the same part of the hose, it looks like a bit better. Like this. And then crimp that down as well like this. And there you go. It's not quite as good as a professionally swaged hose end, but it's still pretty good. So if you're like, you know, wanting just to make a few quick hoses like that, then this is still not a bad option. It's not quite a smooth transition. I've still got a little bit of it. I've put my finger down there. I can kind of feel it. There's still like a little bit of a ledge. So it's not perfect, but it's certainly, it's a pretty good, you know, you know, option if you can't quite afford the fully swaged ends. So now you've spent all this money on your brewery hoses, the next thing you want to do is make sure you protect your investment. So when I say protect your investment, I mean protect the ferrule, the, the, the triclover ferrule, which is on the end of the hose here. Because obviously you damage that, you have to chop the whole end off and re-swage it, kind of a bit expensive. The other thing is worth protecting is your concrete floor. So a lot of people who have a brewery have a nice epoxy concrete floor when they first open the brewery, but you see a lot of breweries, especially around the openings of the fermenters where all the you know, triclover fittings are, they drop these hoses on the ground all day long and they actually make divots into the concrete and actually you know you'll see a whole lot of holes in the epoxy floor coat which is you know it's not that nice and it costs thousands to regrind that and then re-put an epoxy floor coat down so if you want to protect both the hose and your flooring really what you want to do is get these polyurethane bumpers we do sell these on the website separately they're not expensive but they save thousands of dollars in additional hoses you'll buy down the track and your flooring so they're pretty easy to fit. We use polyurethane because it's chemically resistant. It's really durable. If you ever get like, for instance, um, you know, work boots, they often have like polyurethane soles, which are, you know, marketed as being highly chemically resistant for that same reason. And that's why we use them on the hoses. But one thing is they're quite a hard rubber. These are not soft at all. So if you um, want to get them onto the ends of these hoses, you really want to heat them up. So I've got one in hot water here. So basically that's been sitting in hot water for a couple of minutes and you really need to do that so they soften up like this and then what you do is you wrestle them onto the end of the hose now if you haven't got really strong hands you might want to get a bit of help from somebody else um, but they basically go onto the ends of the hose like that and as you can see if I drop this one and a half inch TC hose like that it hits the bumper not the triclover fitting on the end there so that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run and once that goes cold on here it really kind of like grabs really hard on the end of the hose so it's not going to easily fall off. Well, that's it for brewery hoses, guys. If you've got any other questions, put them in the uh, comments below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. If you guys want to see any other brewery hoses or commercial brewery equipment or anything like that on the website, also put it in the comments below or flick us an email. The other thing you can do is sign up to our Facebook homebrew community group. We've got a heap of guys on there sharing tips and tricks on how to use all the gear. The other thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now. And when we bring out even more, you know, really cool commercial gear and stuff like that, you're going to get a notification the fact that the video has just uh, come out. Anyway, that's it and hope to see you next time. Bye.